Okay, Bezat Hashem, today we're going to continue in Mesechet Megillah with Gimel Amud Aleph, where we're going to begin six lines from the top of the page. We're really continuing on with Memras from the same Amora that we listed yesterday, and we'll really have two sections in today's learning. The first section will discuss how the Targum, the translations of Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim were revealed, and we'll discuss exactly the sources of those things, or were not revealed, as we'll see. The second section we'll deal with is the Pasuk in Megillah that we're going to derive from, an idea that there's certain things people would have to stop in order to hear the Megillah, certain important things even, <clears throat> like learning Torah, doing Avodah, these kinds of things, they would stop in order to... Um, go and hear Mikra Megillah, hear the Megillah reading. So let's see. Targum shel Torah, the translation of the Torah. Now you know. Shnai Mikra Vechad Targum. Who wrote that Targum? I don't know. I know I've got to read it. Every you read it, but who is it there? Onkelos. Onkelos. Oh. You've seen, I'm sure you've seen yeah, it aside. Yeah. It says Onkelos. Yeah. So the Targum of Torah, Onkelos Hager Omromi Pira Bilyazev Rabbi Yeshua. Onkulis, you can take a Gemara if you want. Onkulis Hager said it over based on the word of Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. That means Onkulis Hager revealed it, but he had learnt it from the Tanaim, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Targum Shel Nevi'im, and the translation of Nevi'im, that's Torah. Now we have Nevi'im, Nevi'im is the prophets. So this Targum, Yonatan ben Uziel Omro, Mipichagi Zechariya Umalachi. Yonatan ben Uziel revealed it. Sometimes you look in the side of the, the uh, Mikrot Gedolot, or in the side of the yeah. Chumash, you'll see it. When it comes to the translation of the, of the Nevi'im, so this was revealed by, or told over by Yonatan ben Uziel, Mipi Chagi Zechari Malachi, based on the word of Chagi Zechari Malachi. Now Chagi Zechari Malachi were Nevi'im. Mm. So this is based on even earlier people, Chagi Zechari Malachi. Viniz da Azeah, it's, it's Megillah Gimel. If you turn to the Mesechet Megillah, the other way, there, here, I'll pass it here. I'll open it for you, please. <coughs> Towards the top of the page. The first one line is Veniz Azeya. Now, when Yonatan ben Uziel revealed this Targum, it was such a important or significant thing vin is the azea eretz israel arba meot parsa arba meot parsa eretz israel shook 400 parsa by 400 parsa meaning it made a big impact and yet the bat kol a bat kol came out now a bat kol is like a heavenly voice or a heavenly echo and a heavenly echo came out va amra and it said mi uzeshagilas darai lebnei adam who is revealing my secrets to people who is revealing the translation of nevi'im Amad Yonatan ben Uziel Raglav, Yonatan ben Uziel got up on his legs, for Amar, and he said, Aniu Shegaliti Sitarecha Lebnei Adam. I'm the one who's revealing it. It's me, Yonatan ben Uziel, a great rabbi. Galoi Viedua Lefanecha, it's revealed and known in front of you. Shalo Lechvod Diasiti, I didn't do this for my honor. Velo Lechvod Beit Abba, not for my father's honor, meaning I revealed it not for personal gain. El lechvodecha, rather for your honor. What lasiti? I did this. Why is it for your honor, Hashem? Shelo yerbu machloket be Israel, because there shouldn't be many. So there shouldn't be arguments amongst the Jewish people. <coughs> Meaning, neviim is something that's very often very cryptic. It's very hidden. It's very unclear. So Yonatan ben Uziel revealed the targum of neviim, so people would understand and not argue about what's being said in the neviim. Now the Gemara continues, we know that there's a third element also, which is Ketuvim. We have Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. Now Ketuvim is literally the writings. So Va'od Bikesh, furthermore, Yonatan ben Ozil wanted Legalot Targum Shel Ketuvim, to also reveal the Targum, the translation of Ketuvim. But Yatzda Batko, finally a Batko came out, Va'amralo, and it said, Dayecha, it's enough, stop there. Why? My time, Amishum, the Itbe Ketz Mashiach. In Sefer Daniel, there is a reference to the time Mashiach will come. Oh. And that's Daniel is in, in, is in yeah. Ketuvim. So therefore, Batkol said, you want to reveal Nevi'im, I'll give you a pass. But if you want to reveal also Ketuvim's Targum, I'm not going to let you do that because I don't want people to know well, Ketz Mashiach. Mashiach. I don't want oh. people to know that. Now the Gemara wonders, based on what we just said, there seems to be a contradiction. 
We just said that Unkulus Hager revealed the Targum of Torah. We're about to show, it seems to be from a Pasuk in Nehemiah, that really the Targum of Torah was told over at Har Sinai. Meaning, along with the Torah was also the Targum. So how can you tell me Unkulus Hager taught it if this was years and years before by Matan Torah when the Torah was given? Mm-hmm. This is the Gemara's question. Let's see. It asks the Gemara, the Targum shall Torah Unkulus Hager Amro. Did Unkulus Hager really say over the Targum of Torah? The Ha'amar of Ikabar Avin, Amar of Chananel, Amar Rav. My dichtiv. What does it mean in, in, in Sefer Nehemiah? These are the Jews that came back after uh, the destruction of the first temple. They came back from Galut. And it says over there in Nehemiah, Vayikru'u b'sefer Torah Elokim. They read the book of Torah Elokim. Miforash, something clear. V'som sechel. They placed their intellect on it. They focused. V'yavinu b'mekra. And they understood the reading. So the Gemara explains each of these parts of the verse. Explained to us something that was given over at Har Sinai. That was given over at Matan Torah. The first part of the Pasuk, Zemikra. This refers to the Hebrew language that is used in Chumash. It was given over at Har Sinai. Miforash, when it says Miforash, Zet Targum, this refers to the Targum. It was clarified. What do you mean it was clarified? There was a Targum, there was a translation. That was given over at Har Sinai. That's going to be the question. Not by Onkulos. Visom Sechel continues the Pasuk and they place their focus on it. Elo Apsukin, this refers to the breakup of the Psukin, meaning that the verses are chopped up into pieces as was determined by Harsinai. Viavinu Bamikra, and they understood the reading. Elo Piske Tamim, so either this refers to the Tamim, the trup, the cantillations, the, the tunes that we use in reading it, that was given over at Sinai. And we learn others say, Elo HaMesorah. This refers to tradition. So tradition sometimes refers to which words are Malay, which words are Chaser, different understandings of how the Psukim are meant to be written. Either way, the question is, you see clearly at Har Sinai they were already yeah. given this idea of the Targum. How could you tell me, Onkulo Sager taught it to us? The Gemara answers, Shakhum Yasdum. What happened was it was given at Har Sinai, but it was forgotten. This Targum was forgotten. Unkulus, the, the convert, the Ger, had the schut in order to bring it back and reteach it to the Jewish people. Now the Gemara wonders the obvious question in this whole storyline that we just said. When Unkulus revealed the Targum of Torah, wonderful. When when Yonatan Ben Uziel revealed the Targum of Nevi'im, the whole world shook. Right. So the Gemara, what's the difference? Why is it that when Uncle is revealed that there wasn't such a significant event to uh, have such a reaction? Mm-hmm. Why is it that when Uncle is revealed the Targum of the Torah, the world that the Eretz Yisrael didn't shake, but when Yonatan Ben Uziel revealed the Targum of Nevi'im, it did? So the Gemara answers... Because he was already the ah. Targum, you know, it just... Ah, 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 good, good. So the Gemara answers, really, if you look, the words, the psukim and the Torah are much more clear in general. Mm-hmm. The, the, the storyline is much more clear. The yeah. mitzvot are much... But in Nevi'im, things right. are much less clear. So revealing the Targum of Nevi'im, the wow. translation of Nevi'im, is so much more significant. Mm-hmm. That's the Gemara's answer. Beautiful. milta. When it comes to the Torah itself, things are more clear. When it comes to Nevi'im, some things are clear and some things are not so clear. They're, they're hidden. So therefore, revealing the Targum of that was much more of a big deal. Where do we find an example, something in Nevi'im, that clearly is not to be taken at face value, that's very unclear? Because the Pasuk in Zechariah teaches us, the Gemara in Sukkah uses this Pasuk to refer to the times of Mashiach. On that day, there will be a eulogy that will be great in Yerushalayim, like the eulogy of Hadadrimon in the valley of Megiddon. And Rabbi Yosef commented on this verse, If not for the Targum of this Pasuk, we would have no idea what it's saying. Because really, there was no event where a fellow named Hadadrimon passed away in the valley of Megiddon. So, or it was eulogized in the Valley of Megiddo. So rather, the way we're going to explain the Pasuk, it's talking about two different events altogether. But without a Targum, it wouldn't make any sense. 
What does it really mean? <laughs> On that day, there will be a great eulogy in Yerushalayim. <laughs> like the eulogy of Achav Bar Omri, who was killed by a fellow named Haradrimon ben Tavrimon, the Ramot Gilad, in a place called Ramot Gilad. And when Yoshio, like when Yoshio was killed by Parochagira in Bekat Megiddo. But the point is, it's two completely different events. So this is one of the proofs that you see clearly mm-hmm. the, uh, the whole idea that uh, Nevi'im is less clear than the Torah in general. That's why it was much more of a big deal. Now really this is a side point. What the Gemara here points out is like this. We just mentioned that in, in uh, Daniel, there's Ketz Mashiach. In Sefer Daniel, there's an allusion to the time Mashiach will come. It wasn't meant to be revealed. So the Gemara on a side note now says, in Daniel, we find that there's this vision. There's a prophecy somebody has, or he sees some sort of a prophetic vision. And the Gemara there says, the, Gemara, the Pasuk says in Daniel, ani Daniel tamare. I, Daniel, the Pasuk says, I, Daniel, Daniel the prophet, saw alone this vision. Asher hayu imi, and the men that were with me, lo tamare. they did not see this vision. They didn't see this prophecy. But a great trembling fell on them. They became very scared. And they ran away in hiding. So the Gemara says, <clears throat> Who were the men that were with him that did not see the vision, but they ran away because they were scared? So it was other prophets. Malachi are other Nevi'im. They did not merit to see this vision, whatever this... Uh, prophecy was, but they were scared and they ran away. So the Gemara says, actually, there was greatness in each of these parties. Inhu adifi minei ve'iu adif minayu. They were greater than him. Means Chagi Zechariu Malachi had greatnesses that Daniel didn't have, and he had greatnesses that they didn't have. Inu adifi minei. They were greater than him. The inu navi ve'ihu lo navi lav navi. They were prophets, and Daniel was not a prophet. Now that Rashi says something very interesting here. To be considered a prophet, what we're talking about here, it has to be he received prophecy and he was commanded to deliver it over to the Jewish people. Mm. So Daniel might have received prophecies, but he didn't deliver it over to the Jewish people, unlike Chagi Zechariah Umalachi. So that was their strength over him. Because and he didn't want, or because he didn't, he, he didn't have the merit. It sounds like he didn't have. He wasn't on. That's what it seems like. It's very interesting. That's the definition. Where Rashi says of Navi. We find by Aharon also that Aharon was called Moshe's Navi. Why? Because he Moshe was uh, Aral Sifatayim, he couldn't mm-hmm. talk properly. He told Aharon and Aharon delivered the message. Iu Adif Minayu, but Daniel had a strength over them, the Iu Chaza, he saw this vision, the Inulo Chazu. They didn't see this vision. So the Gemara asks the obvious question. If they did not see this vision, my time ayibaitu. So why did they get scared? It says they got scared even though they didn't see. So why did they get scared? So the Gemara has a very interesting idea. Even though they did not see, their mazal saw. Raji learns what's your mazal? Literally means luck. It means sar shall call adam lemala. Every person has a officer above a you got a guardian angel <coughs> maybe. that sounds like so <coughs> you might not see whatever the scary reality in front of you is but it might see it in the spiritual realm or in some realm and therefore it might cause you to become scared even though uh, you didn't see anything um, Ravina Ravina commented on this Shmami no we hear from this if somebody is scared, even though he didn't see something, his mazal might have seen, and therefore he has to be concerned because maybe there's something dangerous here. So what's the solution? The solution is, you should read Kriyat Shema. Kriyat Shema protects us. Now if he's in a dirty place, you're not allowed to read Kriyat Shema. So he should jump four amot away, and then he'll be uh, protected. And he can say, there. And if that's not a possibility, you should say the following. The goat of the butcher's house is fatter than me. Meaning to say is, if you want to kill somebody, to whatever it is, to the shadim, whatever the dangerous things are, go and kill them. If you have to go, it's okay, Yosef. I'm not going to hold you. I'm just going to finish up the last section now. So let's see. Continues the Gemara. Third, uh, the, really the second and uh, final section over here. We just said <coughs> yesterday that the Psukim in Megillah, when it says 
Medina uh, Medina the ear the ear it teaches us a drasha Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, and that drasha was that not only is it considered a walled city, what's within the walled city, but even what's near or what's visible from the walled city. You see the two dots, the two dots, three lines from the be, be below the wide lines. Vahashda da amrit Medina Medina the ear the ear le drasha. So now that you use those psukim of Medina Medina and ear the ear for a drasha. Mishpacha u mishpacha lamayata. So the next words in the pasuk are mishpacha u mishpacha. So now what would that part of the pasuk be used to teach us? Amr Rabbi Yossi Bar Chanina Lahavi teaches us the following. We're going to learn from this mishpacha u mishpacha that when it comes to the Megillah, there are certain families who would stop doing their avodah. We're going to see. They would stop doing avodah in the Beit HaMikdash and they would go to hear Mikra Megillah. Megillah is so important. Even though it's rabbinic, it's Drabanan, it's so important they would stop avodah in order to hear Mikra Megillah, to hear the Megillah. Lavi Mishpachot Keuna Ulevia includes the families of Keuna and Leviyah Shemivatlin Avodatan. They would stop their service Ubain Lishmoa Mikra Megillah and they would come to listen to the Megillah. The Amr of Yudah Marav, like Rav Yudah Marav taught Kohanim Ba'avodatam the Kohanim doing their service in the temple, and the Leviim, they used to stand on platforms and sing and play instruments during the Korbanot, and the Israelim who used to stand and pray that the Korbanot should be accepted, they all stop their work, and they come to hear the Megillah. Tanina Mihachi Abraita supports this. Kohanim ba'avodatan, ulevim b'duchanan, v'Yisrael b'ma'amadan. All three groups that are busy doing avodat Hashem, they're doing avodah, kulan mevatlin avodatan, they all stop their service, uba'in l'shmoa mikra megillah, and they come to hear the megillah. And the Gemara tells us, mikan samchu shabet Rebbe, the Beit Midrash of Rebbe used this halacha, Talmud Torah. They stop studying Torah, meaning even though the yeshiva was in session that day, they would stop studying Torah. And Purim, they would come to hear the Megillah. Why did they say this? They made a kalvachomer from avoda, from service. We have Torah, we have avoda, two different things, but they made a kalvachomer. Regarding avoda, which is much more strict stronger, more important, mevat linan, and we stop it to hear the Megillah, Talmud Torah, so studying Torah, lo kol shekem. Certainly we should stop it in order to hear the Megillah. Now this assumption we just made is that avodah, right, prayer, a korbanot, is more important than Talmud Torah. So if they would stop that based on the psukim, certainly you stop Talmud Torah. Well, the Gemara challenges this. Wait a second. Is Avoda more important, more significant than Talmud Torah? But we have a Pasuk in Sefer Yoshua. Very interesting storyline there. In Sefer Yoshua, we know Yoshua was commanded to cross over into Eretz Yisrael and then to conquer the land. The first stop was Yericho. Now, in Yericho, it was a heavily fortified city, and Hashem wanted to send him uh, support. So he sent him a Malach actually that would help him destroy the city, Amazal. conquer the city, a mazal, a malach, to conquer the city. Now, the storyline goes that they were encamped outside of the city, and a malach approached him with a, a sword outstretched. So Yeshua says to him, are you with us or are you against us? It means it wasn't clear what this guy was, the malach was doing. Are you here to support us or to fight against us? But the Gemara learns in the storyline there, and we'll go through how it fits in the psuki, and Rashi understands it, that actually the malach was sent to give him musar. It was sent to rebuke Yoshua about how he conducted his behaviors with the Jewish people. Let's see. The Pasuk says, Vayibiyot Yoshua b'Yericho. It was when Yoshua was in Yericho, the night before they would begin conquering Yericho. Vayisai enav Yoshua lifted his eyes, Vayar nisa, Vihine ish omed lenegdo. There was a man standing opposite him, which was this Malach, the Gomer. Vayishtachu, and he bowed down to this Malach. So first the Gemara just interjects and says, I don't understand, it was night time. How could he bow down to the Malach? Very interesting. You're not allowed to say hello to your friend at night. Because we're worried it might be a demon and it might cause you damage if you can't really see who it is. So the Gemara answer, Shani Atam, was different by Yoshua. The Amar Lehi, because these, this Malach said to him, I am an officer of the army of the host Hashem, meaning I am, I, I serve Hashem, so he knew it wasn't a shade. The Dilma, the Gemara says, but maybe Meshachri, maybe he was lying. 
My answer is Gemiri de Lomap Geshem Shemaim Levatala. We know that a Malach does not, or a Shed even, does not say Hashem's name in vain, and therefore it was certainly a Malach. So now this Malach turned to Yoshua, and it said to him the following. And again, Rashi understands from the answers we're able to deduce that this was the conversation. The Malach said to Yoshua, Emesh, yesterday, Bitaltim Tamid Shalvein Arbayim. You didn't bring the korban tamid of the afternoon. We know every day there's two tamids that are supposed to be brought in the morning and the afternoon, which is what mincha exactly corresponds. So yesterday, you and the Jewish people did not bring that korban tamid. That's one issue. V'achshav, and now, bitaltem talmud Torah. You're not studying Torah. You're not yet fighting. It's the nighttime. You should all be studying Torah, and you're not. So we gave Musar about those two things. Marlos, Yeshua said back, man bata. Which one did you really come to rebuke me about? Means, which one's more severe, and that's the real focus of the rebuke? Amar lo, ata ba'ati. So he said, now I have come. Meaning to say, the issue that's occurring now, which is the laxity in Talmud Torah, that's the greater issue. So miyad, immediately the Pasuk says, Vayalan Yeshua ba'layla hu betocha emek. And really Rashi understands, and the Rishonim all deal with this, is this is a conjugation of two verses in different areas. But either way, Yoshua dwelled amidst the valley. Amr Rabbi Yochanan turning to Gimel Amud Bet, Melameh, this teaches us, Shalan b'umkash al halacha, that he dwelled in the depths of halacha. means he corrected it. He went when he had the opportunity to next, and he studied Torah along with the Jewish people. And furthermore, of Amr of Shmuel Bar Unya, and furthermore, we see Rav Shmuel Bar Unya said, Gadol Talmud Torah, that Talmud Torah is greater than bringing Korban Tamid like we find again in the same context it says the Malach tells Yeshua now I have come so the Gemara says what do you see from here ultimately you see that the Malach was giving him Musar on the study of Torah that they were lax about and not about missing the Korban Tamid of the afternoon so asks the Gemara if that's true it would seem to appear Talmud Torah is more significant than uh, avodah. So how could Beit Rebbe, how could they say that we're not going to study Torah just because they did Avodah doesn't mean that Talmud Torah is to be negated. Gemara answers lo kashya. When it comes to the studying of Torah of the entire nation, which we're going on over here, Yeshua was encamped next to Yericho and the entire nation wasn't studying Torah. There, Talmud Torah is more significant than Avodah. But when it comes to the study of Torah of one Beit Midrash or one person like the Yeshiva of Rebbe, that's less significant than Avodah. Says the Gemara, is that true? Ud Yachid Kal, we'll finish off with this. Is it true that the individual's Talmud Torah is less significant than Avodah? It's not so important? Vahatana, and we have a Mishnah and Moed Katan. Now the Mishnah there is discussing the following. You know, An Chola Moed, you're not allowed to engage in certain behaviors that are not befitting of the day. It's not Yom Tov. But it's not chol, it's chol moed. So the Mishnah there says as follows, Nashim b'moed, if a person passes away, so generally you're not allowed to have sadness on chol moed either. So Nashim b'moed ma'anot, and on chol moed, women would be allowed to be ma'anot. Rashi explains, ma'anot is that they would cry together. It was at, at funerals, they used to cry together. They're allowed to do that. But they're not allowed to bang their chests. Apparently, in showing their sadness, they used to bang themselves. So they're not allowed to do that. That's too much of an exhibition of sadness that's not allowed on Chol HaMoed. If they were near the coffin, they were allowed to do that on Chol HaMoed as well. Now on Rosh Chodesh, Chanukah, and Purim, they could do both, meaning crying out together as well as banging themselves. But on both, all these occasions, they're not allowed to be mekoninot. Rashi explains, mekoninot is... Uh, what's that called? When one person cries out and the other ones respond. It's responsive crying. So this was like a higher level of crying. That was not allowed to be done. And Rab Barhuna commented, There's no chola moed in front of a talmid chacham. Meaning to say, if a talmid chacham passes away, you could engage in these funerals with all of these sad behaviors in the honor of the talmid chacham and chola moed. So the Gemara says, what do you see? Kol sheken Chanukah Purim, certainly, but Chanukah and Purim, Chol HaMoed is more significant than Chanukah, Chanukah and Purim, so you see that the Kavod of a Talmid Chacham will override Chol HaMoed, and certainly it'll override Chanukah and Purim, which the Rishonim explain means you would not read the Megillah on Purim, instead you would go engage in the funeral of a Talmid Chacham. So you see, even for an individual, says the Gemara, because of his Torah, you negate Mikra Megillah. So you see, Talmud Torah is greater even for an individual. 
So the Gemara answers, that's not a question. Because there's a difference between Kavoda Torah and studying Torah. Honoring Torah mm -hmm. and studying Torah. Kavod Torah Ka'amrit. Kavod Torah Diachid. Kavod Torah of an individual Chamur. That is much more significant. You're right. When it comes to giving honor to the Torah, or in this case the Talmud Chacham, that is much more strict. But Talmud Torah Diachid Kal. But the studying of Torah of an individual, that's considered less significant. And therefore the Beit Midrash of Rebbe was able to make a Kal V'chomer from Avodah. We'll stop here. Uh, the top of Gimel Amud Bet. Hashem will pick up tomorrow with Gimel Amud Bet. Everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you.